As a parent of a child with cancer, you must watch your child slowly disappear. Not only do many of our fighters deal with depression, but the chemotherapy truly tears them down. How many of you feel like laughing and smiling when you have the stomach flu? What about when you're exhausted? Chemo does not only go after the cancer cells, it attacks your stomach lining leading to the nausea, your hair follicles leading to the hair loss, and your bone marrow leading to a significant drop in your blood counts. You no longer have the necessary blood cells to adequately, adequately draw oxygen to your muscles, and you are exhausted all of the time. Because of this, we must watch our children slowly withdraw. For the better part of a year, we see fewer smiles and rarely hear laughter. Dancing and singing in their rooms is replaced with curling up on the couch and quietly watching TV. Instead of trying to take time, make time for sleepovers and movies, you spend your time trying to convince her to spend time with friends, even if it is just to FaceTime or Skype. You could care less about getting her to eat healthy. You just want her to eat. Never in a million years did you think that you would be grateful that your child ate a scoop of ice cream or laughed at something you said. The sweet, careful, Carefree girl is replaced with a scared, sometimes angry girl who, thanks to the steroids, is oftentimes a stranger to you. And then there is the guilt. The guilt that you could have done something. The guilt that you are no longer an available parent to your other children. The guilt that you can't make it all better for your sick child. As difficult as all, <clears throat> as, difficult as, all of this is, it pales in comparison to the fear. Fear is now a daily part of your life. You wake up with it and you take it to bed at night. You learn to live with it, but it is always there. You fear that you will mess up your child's medication, that you won't flush her line correctly. You fear that letting her be with her friends will expose her to germs she cannot fight. Her mood swings, swift and angry, but completely understandable, are seen by others and lead to the fear that your friends are judging you as a parent, that you aren't doing a good enough job. And though you know that you are doing the best that you can, you fear that they are right. You fear taking her temperature, which you must do several times a day, because it could lead to a hospital stay. You fear every doctor's visit, because you are terrified that you could be, hear bad news. You fear every hospital admission, because you aren't sure that you were bringing your baby home. Imagine that for a moment, not knowing if next month, next week, or even tomorrow, that your child will be there to hug, to love, to hold. That is the reality of being a parent of a child with cancer. You also may not realize that this journey never ends. Our sweet survivors will deal with a list of health problems. Chemo is, after all, a poison. Every year of her life, Sydney will make an annual doctor's visit that will look for issues caused by the chemotherapy. There will be echocardiograms, pulmonary function tests, renal function tests, and a host of blood work. And the fear that comes with those tests does not lessen. No child escapes without lifelong issues.